The film begins by showing a train that has just arrived in the old west town of Flagstone, with several men appear on guard as the train stops and the conductor unloads goods. At that moment, they seem to be anticipating something, but no one appears to get off the train until it departs for the next station. Surprisingly, a man actually steps off the train, and he is seen playing a harmonica. This man, whom we'll refer to as Harmonica, then asks some of the men who had been waiting for him. Harmonica is inquiring about Frank, but one of his men says that Frank sent them. Because of this, Harmonica assumes they came to pick him up, although in reality, they were ordered to kill him. Unexpectedly, Harmonica quickly draws his pistol and shoots them. Although Harmonica is wounded in the shootout, he manages to kill them. The scene then shifts, showing a young boy named Timmy who is out hunting with his father, Brett. They live in a house on a hill and have a fairly large piece of land. As Brett is about to have lunch with his children, he suddenly hears a gunshot, leading him to think that someone might be hunting near their property. Soon after that, Brett sees his daughter collapse, having been struck by the shot. Brett immediately runs toward his daughter, but another gunshot rings out, this time hitting his older son. Timmy, who is inside the house, quickly rushes outside to find his father and his older siblings already killed. Meanwhile, Brett's wife, Jill, had just arrived at the train station and appeared anxious as Brett had not yet come to pick her up. As a result, Jill decided to head home by taking a horse-drawn carriage. Along the way, the coachman stopped at a small diner to take a short break. So Jill went inside the diner and told the owner that she was from New Orleans. While they were chatting, they were suddenly startled by the sound of rapid gunfire. Shortly after the shooting stopped, a man named Cheyenne entered the diner. Jill and everyone else inside immediately stared at Cheyenne with suspicion, noticing that his hands were in handcuffs. At that moment, they hear the sound of a harmonica being played from a corner of the room. Cheyenne walks toward the source of the sound and finds harmonica playing the instrument. Cheyenne then takes his pistol and uses it to threaten a man at gunpoint, instructing the man to shoot his handcuffs. Shortly afterward, a group of men arrive. They are Cheyenne's men, who have come to pick up their boss. Cheyenne prepares to leave, but Harmonica, thinking he is one of Frank's men, confronts him about the three men sent to kill him. Cheyenne is almost provoked into a gunfight with Harmonica, but he decides to leave instead. When Jill finally arrives home, people have already gathered in front of her house to offer their condolences. Jill is in shock and deeply devastated upon learning that her entire family including her young son, Timmy, has been killed. Soon after that, after burying her family, Jill is informed by the townspeople about the shooting incident that killed her family. They have found clues about the culprits, and the sheriff immediately orders his men to capture them. Knowing that Jill no longer has a family, the coachman suggests that she return to New Orleans. However, Jill refuses and says that this place, Sweetwater, is her home. Elsewhere, Harmonica is seen confronts a man named Wobbles to ask about Frank's whereabouts. Despite Harmonica torturing him and threatening to kill him, Wobbles insists that he doesn't know where Frank is or why he sent three men to kill them. Realizing that Wobbles is telling the truth, Harmonica decides to let him go. That night, Jill, alone in her house, is startled by the sound of a harmonica being played outside. Terrified, Jill grabs the rifle hanging on the wall and fires aimlessly into the darkness, hoping to scare off whoever is playing the harmonica. The following day, when Jill opens the door, she is shocked to see Cheyenne and his henchmen at her house. Jill assumes that Cheyenne and his men are responsible for her family's murder and demands an explanation as to why her family was killed. However, Cheyenne insists that he and his men had nothing to do with the deaths of Brett and his children. Elsewhere, the real culprit, Frank, was seen meeting with a businessman named Morton, who planned to build a railroad that would pass through Brett's land in Sweetwater. It turned out that Brett was already aware of the railroad construction plan and intended to take advantage of it by building a watering station. Thus, he was determined to keep his land. Since Brett refused to sell his property, Morton hired Frank and his henchmen to intimidate him. However, Frank ended up killing Brett and his family, which infuriated Morton because the sheriff would surely investigate their deaths. Not wanting to jeopardize his business over this issue, Morton orders Frank to resolve the problem immediately. But unexpectedly, Frank intends to seize Sweetwater for himself. Greedy, Frank draws his pistol, 
thinking that Morton plans to kill him. However, violence and guns are not his style, as Morton has something far more powerful, something that Frank does not possess, plenty of money. Meanwhile, Jill, still mourning the death of her family, tells Cheyenne that Brett was a kind and loving man, and she cannot fathom why anyone would have considered him as an enemy. Jill states that she will uncover the truth behind her family's death and will continue to defend her late husband's land, as she is the only surviving heir. Hearing this, Cheyenne comments that Jill deserves a better life, implying that she should move on rather than seek revenge. However, Jill replies that the first man who said that to her is buried out there, and she is determined to avenge her family. Before leaving, Cheyenne told Jill that she reminded him of his mother. It turns out Cheyenne never knew his father, but he was grateful to have had a strong mother. While Jill is in the stable, she is startled by Harmonica's sudden appearance as he lifts the top of her dress, revealing her cleavage. At that moment, Jill tries to resist, but Harmonica tears the sleeve of her dress, saying that he wants fresh water. Jill then offers to fetch water from the house, but Harmonica insists on drinking from the well in front of the house. Unexpectedly, Harmonica discovered that two of Frank's henchmen were spying on her. As Jill and Harmonica walked towards the well, the henchmen continued to watch them from the bushes. However, Harmonica removed his jacket to show that he was unarmed. Once the two men were convinced that Harmonica was not carrying a weapon, they emerged from their hiding place, ready to kill them. But surprisingly, Harmonica had hidden his pistol inside his jacket, and he quickly drew it to kill them. From a distance, Cheyenne and his henchmen witnessed the event, and Cheyenne appeared impressed by Harmonica's shooting skills. In the following days, Jill meets with Wobbles and tells him to deliver a message to Frank. Apparently, Jill has discovered that Frank is the mastermind behind her family's murder, therefore she intends to seek revenge on him. Hearing this, Wobbles becomes frustrated, as people keep accusing him of being involved with Frank. But Jill doesn't care and insists that she wants to negotiate with Frank regarding the construction of the railroad on Brett's land, which now belongs entirely to her. After Jill leaves, Wobbles heads to the station to meet Morton and Frank, who are inside the train. Although Wobbles often denies being associated with Frank, in reality, he works for Morton. Wobbles then tells them about Jill and delivers her message to Frank and Morton. At that moment, Frank, standing near the window, notices someone outside. It's Harmonica, who has been secretly following Wobbles. Frank, knowing that Harmonica is hiding on the roof of the train, signals the conductor to start the train. Along the way, Harmonica realizes that the train is slowing down. So he climbs down from the roof, but unfortunately, Frank has already spotted him and points a gun at him. Frank then takes Harmonica's pistol and orders his henchmen to tie him up. Knowing that Harmonica has been following Wobbles, Frank becomes angry at Wobbles for failing in his duties and causing them trouble by allowing a stranger to tail him. After that, Frank throws Wobbles out of the train, and at the same time, Wobbles sees Cheyenne, who is hiding between the train's wheels. At that moment, Cheyenne signaled to Wobbles to stay quiet, but Wobbles tried to warn Frank. Unfortunately, Frank, fed up with Wobbles, decided to kill him. Frank then turns his attention to Harmonica, who seems to know him very well, though he doesn't recognize Harmonica at all. Curious, Frank asks for his identity, and Harmonica mentions several names familiar to Frank, but he is certain those people are already dead. Frustrated, Frank slaps Harmonica several times, but Morton reminds him of their plan to get rid of Jill so they can take over her property. Realizing that his plan is more important than dealing with a stranger from nowhere, Frank gets off the train with his men to carry out their plan. Meanwhile, Harmonica, still on the train, notices Cheyenne, who has come to rescue him. With his intelligence and excellent shooting skills, Cheyenne successfully kills Frank's henchman and decides to let Morton live because he is suffering from an illness that makes it difficult for him to walk. Back in Sweetwater, Jill is surprised when she sees the construction materials ordered by her late husband. Jill quickly realizes that Brett intended to build a station, and she rushes into the house to find the model of the station her husband made. However, Jill can't find the model anywhere until Frank suddenly appears, holding it. Meanwhile, Harmonica and Cheyenne decide to help Jill defend her property by starting to build the station according to her late husband's wishes. At the same time, Jill is seen at Frank's hideout where he sexually intimidates her. 
After that, Frank threatens Jill, forcing her to auction off her land, hoping that he won't be able to take over the land and execute their plan to build a railroad through it. The following day, Jill attends the auction, but no one is interested in buying her land at the price she wants. It turns out that the bidders at the auction had been threatened by his henchmen so that Frank could buy her land at a low price. Since no one dares to bid, one of Frank's men bids $500, which is the minimum price for the auction. The auctioneer asks once more if anyone is willing to bid higher, but everyone remains silent, afraid of Frank's henchmen. Seeing this, Harmonica steps forward and bids $5,000, which is the bounty on Cheyenne's head as a wanted fugitive. To save Jill, Cheyenne is forced to turn himself in. Soon after that, Frank appears, clearly annoyed because Harmonica keeps interfering with his plans. Frank then offers $5,000 to buy Jill's land from Harmonica, but he refuses and heads upstairs. As Frank leaves the bar, he discovers that his men have abandoned their posts. It turns out that Morton had bribed his henchmen to betray and kill him because Morton was fed up with Frank acting recklessly. Meanwhile, Harmonica, from upstairs, realizes that someone is trying to kill Frank. Harmonica, who still has unfinished business with Frank, decides to save his life. At that moment, Frank finally realizes that his men have betrayed him, but he is puzzled as to why Harmonica helped him. Frank then decided to leave, but when he reached Morton's train, he found that the train had derailed and all his men were dead. Frank also got off the train and found Morton still alive. At that moment, Frank initially intended to kill him, but he realized that Morton was severely injured and could not survive in his current condition, so Frank chose to let him die. Meanwhile, in Sweetwater, Harmonica was not surprised to see Cheyenne who had managed to escape from law enforcement. Additionally, Cheyenne went to Jill's house and requested a cup of coffee. Jill, looking out the window, wonders why Harmonica is outside, as if waiting for someone. Cheyenne replies that Harmonica has unfinished business with Frank, and their showdown may happen soon. Sure enough, Frank arrives on horseback and approaches Harmonica, who has been waiting for him. In short, Frank and Harmonica prepare for their final duel, which will determine the victor. However, for Harmonica, this fight is far more personal than Frank realizes, as he seeks revenge for the tragic death of his brother at his hands. The scene shifts to the past, showing a young boy holding up the body of his deceased older brother, trying to keep him alive. The young boy is revealed to be a young Harmonica, and the one who ordered his brother's execution is Frank. At that moment, Frank shoves a Harmonica into the young Harmonica's mouth, causing him to collapse and accidentally kill his older brother. In the present, determined to avenge his brother's death, Harmonica swiftly fires a shot at Frank, fatally wounding him. In his final moments, Frank once again asks Harmonica who he is. Harmonica then pulls out the harmonica he always plays and shoves it into Frank's mouth, just as he had done to him years ago. Because of this, Frank suddenly recalls that Harmonica is the boy who held up his older brother. Jill, realizing that Harmonica has killed Frank, finally feels relieved that her family's revenge has been fulfilled. As Harmonica enters the house, Jill smiles at him. However, she soon realizes that Harmonica intends to leave now that he has avenged his brother's death. Therefore, Jill immediately tells Harmonica that she hopes he will return to Sweetwater someday. As Harmonica and Cheyenne leave Sweetwater together, Cheyenne suddenly collapses, revealing that he was gravely wounded while escaping from law enforcement. Realizing this, Harmonica decides to rest for a while, but soon after, Cheyenne takes his last breath. Sympathetic for him, Harmonica places Cheyenne's body on his horse and continues his journey. Back in Sweetwater, the railroad construction continues despite Morton's death. Jill, who successfully defended her land and property thanks to Harmonica and Cheyenne, is seen offering water to the railroad workers, while the station that was her late husband's dream is now under construction. Moral lesson from the story, don't wait for the train to show up before you play your harmonica. It might just make you the target of a shootout instead of a music lover.